Hi guys, a lot of things have changed since the first video, I just wanted to catch you up. So the ALU has shrunk, it has shrunk by about a thousand redstone, it's very significant. The I've optimized out the pathways and removed a lot of things that were silly and unnecessary and I'd shoved in there just trying to get the thing done and working. But didn't stop and make sure that it was the easy or the, the uh, simplest way or smallest way to do something. I just got something that worked. So I went through there and took out the stupid mistakes and came away with a thousand redstone worth of, worth of savings. It t used to take about eight thousand redstone to build. Now you can probably build it in seven thousand. And I came away with an extra four hundred square blocks worth of space. It is twenty blocks less wide and twenty blocks less long. And what that means is there's less room, uh, less room taken away, and more room for memory. And that's what that is way over there. That is memory, the lowest chunk of memory that I will be using in this computer. It is a 16-bit register. And I need two things for to be able to turn the ALU into a CPU. I need a couple of registers and that's this and I need a program counter and that's that so there's a program counter there are the registers and here's here's another implementation of a program counter it's more of a proof of concept you can see it's just spread out instead of being crunched together like that is and I ended up putting this together just a little while ago because I'm using some shortcuts in this program counter that I'm not entirely comfortable with. I'm willing to bet that those shortcuts are going to uh, cause some sort of edge case problem where I end up setting the counter to some weird value or causing a race condition in one of the flip-flops because in the flip-flop imp implementation which I found on the wiki there's a clever hack, but it, it, it leaves, I feel like it leaves me open to something weird happening in the future. And I, it probably does, but I probably shouldn't worry about it. But still, just in case I have this other implementation of this counter, just in case I need it, I'll, I can shrink this up. At least I have it working. This one, though, it's... It's a full 16-bit counter, ready for prime time. Just ready for a chance to prove there's something wrong with it. But uh, so far, it doesn't seem like it. The clever hack is this: I, I need something called an edge set flip flop, delay flip flop, and this is just a regular flip flop, a non-edge set delay flip flop. And this right here turns the flip flop into uh, into something that's pretty close to edge set. What it does is it it kind of races around here once it gets a clock signal and cuts it off so it only so that it gets close to uh, being on only when this switches from off to on. It's still a couple cycles into the 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 onness of the clock signal if that makes any sense and that's the problem. Uh, the, whoever created this and put it on the wiki decided that the amount of time it took for this to race around was so short that it didn't matter. It was close enough to it just being, uh, just being, just letting the uh, the flip flop switch right when this comes on, and that's not quite right. I've had some weird things happen, like some heartbeat stuff where it comes on then comes on again, and that's been with shorter shorter loops than what I have for this thing because eventually this loops around back into a flip-flop way on that end so that if, if something does show up it's gonna show up there and it might show up at some point so I'm ready with the proper implementation of a of a uh, delay flip-flop right over here but it's very large it's I think it's from here to here it's one flip-flop I mean obviously isn't going to take up that much space because 
this is just me laying out the gates making sure that I have a design that works but when I crunch it together it's still gonna take up most space and this clever things are I'll use a clever thing until it proves to be not so clever and I'll, one last thing I want to do was to uh, show you this memory maybe kill this pig yeah I'll kill the pig Sorry, pig. so here's a bit of memory a bit of memory is 10 by 4 by 3 and that's just storing a 1 or a 0 so that is how much it, space it takes for one, for one bit of memory and this is a 16 bit wide bus that's how huge this thing is just to give you some perspective uh, I mean I'm sure this gives you some perspective right here but in terms of my plans my plan is to have 128 bytes of RAM 128 bytes of RAM is what was in the Atari 2600 that's how much the memory the Atari had. So, 128 bytes of RAM, just based on how small I've managed to get this RAM, we'll end up using around 100,000 blocks of space. 128 bytes, 100,000 blocks of space. And that's just RAM. That's not storage for the actual program you're running. That's just memory space for the program to use so memory is definitely the biggest space hog and I'll see what happens as I get the rest of the CPU together to see how much space I have left for memory itself but there's the register here's the program counter those are the two things I need to start working on the CPU proper so that's what I'm going to do next that's what's coming up and I should be able to get that done soon I don't want to say how long it'll take me but because I know if I say how long it'll take me, it'll take me far longer than whatever I say. But I think I, I think I have the parts I need to be able to just lay these things together. But I wanted to get this video out, show you what was coming up, show you what had happened in the past couple of days. So this is what's up next. I'm going to have a CPU working in Minecraft. It's going to be awesome. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you soon.